Hey, welcome to Gigavolt. Uh, some of you might have seen the uh, power supply teardown and the uh, hard drive teardown. Now what I've got here is a working light. Uh, this can be like a hazard light that hangs and illuminates an area. And I've made it from one of those uh, rather uh, lousy power supplies and a, the hard drive chassis that we from the hard drive we scrapped and a 10 watt LED from eBay. So the uh, nice thing about these 10 watt LEDs, they're very tolerant, uh, voltage tolerant, and so they can tolerate a large range of voltage and they will uh, tolerate a very large range of current. So we can actually do just hook this up bare wire directly into the LED and turn this on. We have a light as bright as Zeus. Hey, so for this video, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to build one of these out of a, a, any old heat sink that you have at home and uh, you know just a power brick and a, a 10 watt LED from eBay. So without any further ado, I'm going to cover polishing in a heat sink. All right, so this is our heat sink and for most of you, uh, mounting the LED directly to it would be fine. Uh, however, I like my uh, heat sinks to have a meter fin finish on them before I uh, mount anything on them. The reason why is because there's small grooves in the heat sink, and those grooves can actually create sm small microscopic air gaps between what you're trying to get the heat out of and the heat sink itself, and that makes uh, it less efficient. And for something like this, I want it to be passively, passively cooled, so I want the heat transfer to be as efficient as possible. So to do that, I'm going to take my Dremel here, and I have some polishing compound. I'm just going to turn this on, and just get some of it onto the Dremel like this. And I'm just going to go on here, and start polishing. All right, so that took a little while, but uh, we had to settle for less than a perfect mirror finish. But this is what we got. It's a lot better than what it was before. And we're going to start some soldering. We're going to solder a switch onto this one. And we're also going to uh, mount the LCD right there. Uh, we're going to use some hot glue to hold the switch in place. And some uh, thermal paste, also from eBay, that uh, actually, uh, it's called heat sink plaster because it actually dries solid and holds the uh, LED right to the heat sink. So you don't have to worry about uh, gluing it on there or anything like that. Um, since it gets hot, hot glue is not an ideal solution since it gets soft when it heats up. Um, although, hopefully this isn't getting to the kind of temperature needed to melt hot glue. Uh, for power, we've got another one of our many D-Link power supplies. We're just going to chop this open and uh, chop off the cable that is and wire it directly in. And uh, I'm not going to worry about filtering capacitors or anything like that. We're just going to stick it in there and uh, let the LED regulate itself. So, without further ado. So this is going to be our positive. We want to test this though. So we're going to get a multimeter, plug these in, and make sure we know which one's positive before we wire it up backwards. Okay, so we can see we've got a positive voltage here, and we've got the fluke hooked up with the uh, white marked black wire here to the positive. So we know this is a positive here. We can proceed to wire the system. So this is my uh, chisel tip that I got off of eBay recently. I'm going to be testing it out. Hopefully it's not too high a heat density for the uh, switch here, but we're going to find that out soon. And I'm just using my tip tinner here 
to make sure it's good and ready to go when I start to use it. So, looking pretty good. Let's give it a shot. That actually looks pretty good. That was actually super easy. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, so I'm gonna hot glue this right here for my LED, which is gonna go right there with it. So, first thing though, I'm gonna hot glue this switch in position so it's not flopping around on me. And that's it. Look at that, that's fantastic. I love the heat density on these chisel tips. It makes soldering so much easier. Uh, you can get these on eBay. Um, it's, I got mine 12 different tips for $10. So, uh, don't pay too much, but they are uh, fantastic. Um, just search for Hacko Compatible. Um, they work with the Solmax uh, soldering stations we have in our program. Okay, so now I'm going to apply the heat sink plaster here uh, to this while it's uh, hooked up here, and then I'm going to finish the soldering of the LED. Um, first though, I'm going to unplug the uh, supply because it's actually still plugged in, and there we go. So let's unplug that. So I'm going to try not to block with my hands here. Basically, I'm just going to put some of this plaster stuff on here. There we go. It's quite viscous. So you need to use a lot of pressure to get out of the tube. And just get it down here. Press firmly. Give it a good wiggle. And we've got it coming out the sides now, which is a good sign. There we go. Voila! Alright, so now we're going to apply some flux paste, which I've been using in my other soldering joints, but haven't talked about yet. I love flux paste. Uh, with flux paste, basically, we can make any soldering joint the easiest soldering joint we've ever made. Um, what this is, is it's kind of a concentrated flux. It's really easy to apply. It doesn't go where you don't want it because it's a, a paste, not, not liquid and it doesn't evaporate as easily. The downside is it, is it leaves more residue, uh, but any flux uh, remover does a great job of taking it away. Um, unlike those uh, you know, no clean flux uh, pens, uh, they still leave stuff behind and that, the stuff they do leave behind is very hard to clean. Uh, this stuff, uh, it does leave stuff behind, but it's very easy to clean, I find. And uh, you know, if you do a good job of it, it makes uh, makes your product look really professional and uh, it works a lot better. You make fewer mistakes. So it's really easy. I just use a Q-tip. Uh, I use the same Q-tip over and over again. I just keep it in the bag uh, between uses. And I just do a little dab there. And I'm just going to wire thread this first. So I'll put this back. I just leave it in the flux when I'm not using it. And let's just pull that back a bit. Okay. Up and as soon as it gets high enough, there we go. Comes the solder. And we got some flux on here, so let's just get that off. Let's heat this up. And you can see there's a lot of flux fumes coming off, but that's alright. So I've got my fume extractor here. And there we go. That's all there is to it. All right, and it works.
<laughs> how, how fun was that? <laughs> yeah.